Yes, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, welcome to the Retro Spectrum. I'm Ewan Spence once more in the chair for a full length review. Uh, we are, as you can probably tell from the picture, uh, Tier Na No Gargoyle Games is impressive adventure game. Uh, one of the uh, first graphical adventure games, uh, not just on the Spectrum, but on pretty much any platform out there, at least in 1984. It's our second game after um, the Into the Screen shoot em up that was Ad Astra, which I will put on the list as well. I uh, remind you that you can uh, find out more at our Facebook community page, facebook.com slash RetroZXSpectrum. You can watch live recordings and uh, previews and testing and all the stuff we do to get used to, to get a game review in place over at the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash you and Spence. So you've hopefully found YouTube as well, and if not, it's in the Twitch panel, um, or you can search YouTube Retro Spectrum. We're not the Australian Craft Fair channel. We're the other one. Look for the one that's got lots of Spectrum screenshots. Anyway, Chernanog is huge um i mean i mean let's 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 just start with that one by greg follis and roy carr uh, from gargoyle games setting in the mysterious world of tirna nog the land of the youth and you have a quest um like all good adventure games uh you have to collect the fragments of something in this case the seal of caleb there are four different parts to the seal you reunite those in a certain place and you will gain back your youth and you'll return to life because tuna nog is effectively the afterlife uh you collect all you basically you go around you find things you use them to open up other things you use them to open up other things and eventually you find one of the parts of the seal so um a lot of people are familiar with how games like Dizzy work on the Spectrum. Tiernanog, exactly the same idea, same as any adventure game. And there were a lot of text adventure games out for the Spectrum at this time, but this is where Tiernanog is different. It's not a text adventure game. It is a graphical adventure game. Arguably, or actually, no, we, we'll come to the bit about the amine, uh, animation as we come through. We will open up now. You load in. And you get this. And so straight away, you see that you've got your different font from your standard ZX Spectrum font. Uh, we're 1984, so it's not long after Spectrum's been made. They've all been reprogrammed. This actually, scarily enough, is the first thing that you're into something special. This, this looks different. Um, also, the fact that you can save game and restore game makes you think, this is quite big, because I'm going to have to save these things onto an audio cassette uh, and save the adventure state. Now, nowadays, um, on PC gaming, uh, that's console gaming that's pretty much standard uh and to be fair from the early games you had that as well you could save games at scrabble and in, in, in the way through and at sidetrack which we play a fair bit of on the channel you can do that as well but it's still something special it's still oh this is going to take us some time and they've spent some time on it because you've got this different font as well it's so celtic mythology and norse and ties in with the, what we've seen on the cover and everything it's already setting the scene after you know after you've had that loading screen if we remember that loading screen um the forests and the graphics and, and the, the, the big version of the font and then you come into this and they go right then well, let's enter the game and as you enter the game you realize you've got something that is not a text adventure you know you could carry it in or not could have been on a text adventure but this is what the developers wanted they wanted something that was graphical that was different that was a unique look and it certainly has that there is an argument to be made uh that they made the animation <laughs> of the character first as you can see him nicely bouncing along that they made his animation first and then they said right well we're going to have to work out how we're going to build up the adventure game of tiranog around our character <laughs> you know and if that's what it takes you do your tech demo first and that's what you get to uh, right then so obviously this is uh been uh developed in the time of just the 48k spectrum so again really small amount of there i've just reloaded it in the background because you can't play it in the 128k spectrum but you saw there was the little dotted animation line so if you're downloading the version of this at home go for the 48k so we step through the door from the altar uh, and we have our axe on the ground and uh pick up the axe we can attack with the axe there we go but before we go outside a quick word about the control system uh because this is this is this is not as you can probably tell not off the joystick joystick does absolutely nothing you're on the keys in this one. Um, your bottom row is left and right, alternate keys. Uh, your middle row 
allows you to turn around your viewpoint. We'll come back to that when we get outside. Your next row up is Q and W, which is pick up and drop. And then your top row is either attack um, with the corner keys, um, or you can switch on auto walk, so you don't need to keep leaning down on your dead rubber keyboard. Or you can go back and save out of the game at any point you want to. Uh, and if we go back in, you'll go back into the same space. Now, I've actually managed to turn myself around, which is a good example here. See, look, right, we're instead of the throne. Um, you can see there with the compass. We're now, as we look into the screen, we're looking to the west. We're now looking to the south. We're now looking to the east. We're now looking to the north. As we look into the screen, not the way the character is looking, the character is Character is walking east west. Now the gate, the, the, the thing to help here is let me. Uh, I think I can get the mouse popping. Is you can see here, east west, that's where the character is facing. Into the screen is north and south is sort of down here. So that way, if we look that way, it's the north. So it is unconventional. Um, not then because nobody's done a game like this before. Uh, back in 1984. Uh, now it is look back when thinking you, know, you could have some joystick support on this one. You could have the fire button to turn around and everything. You could have up down and and so on, but you didn't have that, you, like, you didn't really have at that point a standard joystick. So we head outside to the central plane and we can have a little, look at, well, we can, we can duck back in. Uh, we've got through another door to the side of us. I'll give you a clue. Don't go through them just yet. <laughs> so that's where we've just been. That's the uh, three doors that are to the east of us. Uh, so if we want to walk to the north, what we need to do is sort of turn it to the side and we can see north to the side. Now, what you can also see is that each of the four cardinal directions has a different background. So we've got a volcano to the west. We've got uh, no to the volcano to the to the south. Get that right. Uh, we've got the mountains to the east. We've got the uh, vampire bats flying over the castle to the north, and we've got the tower to the west. So if we want to travel north, we we'll do this way. Now, of course, we still have our axe, which we're going to need because we are not alone. In this kingdom, there is an evil creature uh, coming around. I see it's evil. It's just quite happily minding their own business, the she. Um, and uh, if they touch you, they will basically because you're dead already. They won't. You won't be able to do anything. So, um, oh, there's one coming up. Uh, they will knock you unconscious, uh, and you will return to the altar. But you'll drop any objects that you have. Now, um, I've been having great fun trying to work out how you actually damage them which is as you can see there square punch with the axe nothing happens return back to the altar gotta go find it again <laughs> so already you can see why this game is not is widely regarded as a spectrum classic uh, and one of that is because let me just duck down this way uh, let the she walk past. Is it's oh you're not gonna pass it on T talk. Can I can I just Nope, I can't even just do a tap on you there. One, it's frustrating. All oh, all spectrum games are frustrating in, in, in this time of year, but this is this is more so than anything. Second, it is huge. Um the um the the press kit uh, suggests it has over a thousand miles of path, and I think that's or hundreds of miles. Um, it doesn't. It's not as big as that, but it is incredibly ex extensive. If you ever get a chance to have a look at uh, something like World of Spectrum, where you can see the maps that you have on the screen, as uh, so we just head into this place, um, you realise that it is a huge game. Um, and dot around the game, you've got the various objects to pick up uh, we'd like you to keep selecting the axis so we can hit people with the axe even though it doesn't make any difference whatsoever <laughs> and that will unlock a door somewhere in the world I'm not quite sure where but somewhere in the world there will be a door that needs that key and now I've got that key, I can go and open that door. Unless, of course, the she uh, pops up. Should we try and get the she again this time? No! So we drop everything. We drop everything. And you get brought back into the centre of the game. So, 
nice if we could solve one of the puzzles um, but it's not going to happen tonight got to be honest because there's a lot going on here so let's just go up and pick up the objects pick up the objects nope that sent me the wrong way turned the wrong way <laughs> so you have exploration you don't just type go north go south pick up key you physically yourself have to go north you have to go south you have to pick up the key yourself and that at its time revolutionary i got time to get the axe no i know there's a she there i can see i'm not going to attack it with a key though am i <sighs> nope i'm just going to keep running away down here oh i can pick up a pebble a feldspar can i attack with that maybe the feldspar is more effective than an axe no <laughs> And now, of course, I have to remember where everything is. And we're back at the start again. So, uh, this taps into a couple of things. Uh, the Spectrum itself uh, grew up to have a reputation that Spectrum game players love making maps. Um, and I can't work out what came first. The fact that people who bought the Spectrum made maps, or they were given games like Tiranar and Elk, where they had to make absolutely huge maps you've got the central plains you've got um uh, lift you've got the storm base tier calcan glasmar siege florence lava flats Ruins retreat a library the forest of cern badheim the plain of lies um and tier falam all of these are different areas in this game so it is huge you have to map it out uh and you have to find the object so for example the key will open the door the feldspar may well be needed to do whatever feldspars are so you're going to need to do a little bit of research on what a feldspar is um it's a stone basically uh, that's usually made up um as uh from here rock forming to still silicate minerals that make up 41 percent of the earth continental crust of course it is i knew that all along so you deal with all of these things uh and uh they, they allow you to find other objects so you find other joints pretty standard adventure stuff so spoiler coming up you have to use these things to collect to collect noada's sword dactus cauldron the stone of fowl and loose spear you take those four things because they make up part of callum's seal and um, you take them um to find the spades and in there uh, you will get the spade. You can then create a Callum's hammer, and you can then return back to here, the altar of the seal. Uh, place all the elements of the seal, and that—that that is how you finish the game. You're then given the seal of youth. You become young again, and you come back to life. But like most uh, games <laughs> in the spectrum that have that huge expansive story very few people finish them um it's you know it's one of those games where you're saying yeah i remember that never finished it it's one of the most popular things you can do it took a long long quest but it is there uh, the the excitement um it's slow paced excitement but the excitement is there in capture the she the slowly discovering the the different areas uh working out um trying to remember where you left your axe um because the axe makes all the difference down here we ah uh, see there's the she right then okay let's try you again there nope nothing i'm meant to be scaring you away not just coming back to life again um so maybe i just need something more powerful in the game and right now the only answer is to do a monty python king arthur esque run away and the she's knocked me out already because you're just waiting outside the door frustration also in increases the length of the game as well this is not an easy ride this is not play tested to keep you engaged in the game to buy more premium premium software stuff it just is look with hindsight there are a couple of things wrong with tier and the control system is awkward the she are just a little bit too unforgiving especially at the start of the game it can be very confusing you've literally got to start mapping on bits of paper the second you go um the map itself in the game is mapped up with dis discontinuity so for example i'm going to step out here and just go straight through the door in front of me okay so that's locked so that's why you want the key oh, you... uh, i'll do a run away then shall i okay let's guess what way is the right way to run away 
this she's just waiting outside the door for me. How am I meant to fight that? Do, do I just reset the game and start again? Who knows? And it is, you know, you, you literally have to work all of that out yourself. Right, there you are. Okay, fair enough. At least I can go down here and get my stone and my key back again. Thank you. Got a key. Got a key. This just gives you an idea now of just how big this one section of the game is. Okay, so we turn our viewpoint camera around. So let's face it, you do nowadays in the 21st century. Uh, but um, there's no smooth turning animation. You've got to keep a good eye on that compass to work out where you're going. And we've now walked into the Plain of Lies. And walk in, 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 and walk in. Now we're not walking back the way because we turned the camera viewpoint around. So we're walking, we're walking, we're walking, we're walking. And unless you've been keeping track of, you know, the directions and everything, I mean, lava flats now. You know, there is a lot around in this game. Uh, and here's the thing for you: if I was to be hit by a she just now. Oh, I found a ring. Isn't that nice? If I was to hit my issue just now, the objects that I have, I would drop here and I would have to walk all the way back to get them. Which might take some time. Go, oh, where are you? Where are you? I don't have anything to defend myself with. I'm just going to run away in a direction of where I have no idea where I'm going. Those of you are looking for early examples of parallax scrolling, by the way, you'll see that we've got it running here. Uh, both in the skyline and in the background. So yes, you're going around, you're collecting objects in your classic adventure game style, moving from place to place. Difference here is you're not typing it in. You are... Oh, I've got a door here. Oh -ho. Can I get into there? No. I'd like to try. Is it because I'm not completely square on the door? Oh, that's... There we go. I'm into a little tunnel somewhere. Ooh. <coughs> I appear to be allergic to whatever flower I've just walked over. It's not a flower, some bow. Ow! What are you doing that for? I got a crown now. Give me my crown back. My dad. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I was dead already, but uh, knocked out in the game. And now, I've got to try and find that cavern now uh, to get the objects back. So you can see where your frustration and tracking and and multiple times. Let's go here. Now I've got a map written down, which I found over from World of Spectrum. I can actually see where the bones and the crown are. Uh, and uh, those bones and the crown, because I also have the solution, uh, are going to be used uh, to help with nothing. They're not listed as important objects, um, but they may help with some of the side quests uh, that are sitting there as you go along. Tirnarnog is one of the earliest graphical adventures you have not just in spectrum but on pretty much anything it is very early so you can forgive it on things like awkward controls and stuff uh but at the same time it is expansive it is huge it's a massive game and i come back again it's in 48k that's less nice than some jpegs that you have uh for your th profile art on facebook um it is so memorable because you know once you bought this game you spent time with it. You know, this this game would have been expensive in terms of pocket money and how many newspaper rounds uh, you would have had to, to, to work through. Well, get me axe back, if nothing else. Uh, so you spent time mapping. You spent time understanding. You used that compass. The, the controls would eventually, you know, become second nature. Uh, and you would work out where you are and what's going on. 
Um, it takes time. You will get there. Um, not immediately, but you will get there. We want to go to the east, actually. Uh, and my brain says east is always to the right on the screen, so let's just flip that round and take that through there. You you would slowly work out uh, where all the items are, where you would need them. Um, it takes time to build up. If you were to sit down and and play this nowadays, you'd, you'd have to go back to basics. You'd have to sit there and map it out again, and that wouldn't change uh, in terms of, of approach. Yes, you could bypass that by heading over to the likes of World of Spectrum to have a look at the maps. And, yeah, but you could do that by buying Crash Magazine. Um, three months after the game, three or four months, I well, think no, Crash wouldn't be in an 83, it would be after that. Uh, so you would have got stuck in a deck at dead end, and then she comes around and all you've got is this little axe that doesn't actually seem to do anything. Tirna and Oak is a landmark game. And I'll be honest, uh... I initially said I don't remember playing it. I only remember playing the sequel to the sequel, which is Marsport, uh, which is the futuristic version. Dundarak was in the middle, and then Tirnanog was at the start. There's the she, right on cue. Uh, let's at least try once more with the axe. Nope, we'll drop the axe at the dead end. Uh, so Tirnanog did pop up on one of the uh, your, Sin your Sinclair cover tapes. Uh, and the week after that, um, the month after that was uh, Dundarak, and the week after the month after that made the same mistake twice uh was marsport and it'd be marsport that i remember probably because it was the futuristic one uh yep it popped up on uh, it just says on one of the uh da -da -da, there we are um issue 65 the second magnificent seven tape uh so it would have been a, a game that you a lot of people would have revisited later on in the spectrum run. is it worth the revisit now certainly in terms of look what you can do programming wise you get a graphical demo you decide to do an adventure game you get some like tier and which still has a huge amount um, of love for it it's not as accessible as some older spectrum games this has got a high bar to get into even now you really need to really think about the controls when you're walking it through and it it's not as immediate uh as some other adventure games do but if you can get over that hurdle if mapping is still your thing if working at where object a needs to go to unlock object b to object c and those chains of puzzles that go through which still drive games nowadays you think you're red yellow and blue keys and doom it's just find find an object to open up an object to go in to get the other object and so on to get to the exit level that's all still there wrapped up in celtic mythology given some great animation and then squished into a space smaller than the the graphic of the um <laughs> of the cassette cover um it is all done there um yes it does have a ridiculously huge <laughs> difficulty curve um but Every game back in those days had ridiculously difficult cards because you didn't switch off. You didn't go and buy something else because you had to wait another two, three weeks to your paper and money to come through or whatever it was. Uh, and even then, the games needed time to save up. So you spent time. And that's why lots of people fall over with Tiernar Nog. I wasn't around there the first time, so I missed all of that. I can see the appeal of it now. Is it one that I'm going to keep putting in constant rotation on the Twitch channel right now? No because there's a lot of spectrum to explore uh, the maps are already written and if i'm going to be doing stuff getting object a to object b then we've got a whole queen of games to look through not just dunder and more sport the dizzy games is already mentioned um but pretty much all of the spectrum adventure games are following that through this put a marker in the ground it was very very rarely equaled um, it was in some cases, and we'll get to them over the next couple of weeks and months here on Retrospectrum. But for now, Turn Our Nog, fondly remembered. Uh, it's worth another look at again if you've spent weeks and months and you can go, why did I enjoy this game so much? You'll remember. You'll have that happy memory, and that will be enough. Right, I'm Ewan Spence. Uh, you can uh, find more uh, at our Facebook group, facebook.com slash RetroZXSpectrum. We're on YouTube as well, uh, where you may find this video. Um, if not, just search YouTube Retro Spectrum and look for the one with all the Sinclair screenshots. And uh, we do live recordings and uh, game playing uh, throughout the week over at twitch.tv slash Ewan Spence as well. All the links are going to be in the descriptions. Uh, so for now, that has been Tiernar Nog. Thank you all very much for watching. And I'm away to return to the land of the youth.